Formula One car suspension is quite different to what you've got in your road car. Now, in your road car, it's mainly about comfort, protecting you from the bumps and the lumps in the road, give you a nice smooth ride. If you have a more sporty car, some of that may be compromised to give you a slightly harder suspension so you can be a bit more aggressive through the corners. But in a Formula One car, things are completely different. Driver comfort really goes out of the window. In Formula One, suspension really is about just two things. One, maximizing the contact patch of the tires against the track, and keeping the aero platform, keeping the underfloor and the front wing working perfectly in ground effect next to the circuit. And to do that, you have quite a different suspension set up to what you would have in your road car. Indeed, this year's cars have a very different suspension setup to what they had last year. Now, suspension has changed over the years in Formula One. We've had very basic suspension, we had active suspension, we had interlinked hydraulic suspension with Frick. And then by the time we got to the end of last year, suspension was incredibly complex. So let's just have a look just how complicated last year's suspensions were. So this is a typical front suspension from a car last year. You have got side springs, side dampers, heave springs, heave dampers, roll springs, roll dampers, inerters, you have hydraulic links out to the side pod which have damper valve settings with extreme one-way valving. You have gas springs which could either be used to go very solid to stop the car diving under braking or go very soft and collapse at high speed allowing the car to go much faster on the straight. We don't have time in this show to go through and explain everything that was going on within one of these systems, which is completely passive, no active technology here. But the problem with this was, is when the FIA scrutineers look at this, they can't tell outside how these systems work. So how therefore do they make sure that they're legal? Well, they couldn't. And the only way they could do that would be to simplify them. And that's what we have for 2022. Much more simple suspension. Effectively, all you have at each end, each corner of the car is a rocker, springs and dampers. So let's have a look at them in a bit more detail. The three systems that you have, the mechanical systems to operate this, start with the rocker. Now this is a rocker. This is operated either by the push rod or the pull rod and the summit we've covered lots of times on Tech Talk. And the rocker is basically just a shaft that rotates on bearings that has these levers which operate the springs and the dampers or in this case a little drop link to the anti-roll bar. Very simple technology, all the teams have them and you can either have them horizontal or vertically in the car depending on the setup. Now what they operate are the springs. Now when you think of a spring, what you think of is a coil spring like this. Now coil springs you have on your road cars, you're probably quite familiar with them. They're compressed by the suspension to give you your spring rate. But the problem with springs like this in a Formula One car is that they're big and they're bulky, especially when they're wrapped around uh, a damper uh, as they would typically be on other race cars because then if you wanted to change the spring or the damper, you have to take both out and it just takes up time and lots of effort. So Formula One's found a better way than coil springs. What you have instead are torsion bars. Now these are still steel springs, but rather than working in compression, they work in torsion. They work by twisting. So one end will be attached to the rocker, the other end will be attached to the chassis, and as this push rod moves the rocker, it twist the spring to give you the effect. Now there'll be some engineers out here say that well a coil spring actually works in torsion as well. That is correct but in terms of how they work in, in an installation this still works by compression rather than the, the twist of it there. And then you have dampers. So this is a typical Formula One damper and they're quite small and they work just like uh, the dampers or shock absorbers as some people prefer to call them in technical terms they're dampers and they just work by a piston going up and down inside the body that moves oil and you may have a nitrogen cylinder there just to give you constant displacement inside. Now the damping effect works by valves either in the piston or little dial valves in the body of the damper, changing how the oil passes through both as the damper is compressing and extending, both with high shaft speeds and with lower shaft speeds. And in Formula One, they prefer not to have adjustable dampers, so you wouldn't go and reach into the footwell and make a few adjustments, a few clicks of suspension damping on the damper itself. They tend to be unadjustable and it's all fixed by the valving inside here. And the reason they do that, it's a little bit lighter, it's a little bit simpler, and it's much easier for them to actually take the damper out and replace it with a complete other damper that's been valved to the specification that they want. So it's very rare that you see actual adjustments. And these dampers are fairly typical. Teams will make their own damper bodies, but often the actual 
highly technical damper valves are designed by specialist companies that specialize in damping technology. So let's have a look how this all works when you're actually inside the car. Now, if you think about a car, you need the suspension first to support the car, to give you that sort of basic spring rate, to support the car off the ground. And then, as it starts to move around, you want to control those movements. Now, those movements basically listed into two different types. First of all, you have roll, when the car's going through the corner, so one side of the suspension's rising, the other one is falling, and you want to resist that. And then at the rear of the car, you would want to control the pitch, which would be squat under acceleration or even lift under braking. And then you get pitch at both ends, which is what we call heave, where the whole car moves down. And this is typically when the aero load at high speed is squashing the car down to the track. Now, the race engineers want to have, be able to adjust each of those modes, the support of the car, the roll control and both pitch front and rear of the car completely separately. So the way the designers work is to decouple all of these systems so that one doesn't interfere with the other, giving the race engineer the perfect ability to tune the springs and the dampers to work with this. So let's have a little bit closer how they work inside the front of the car. We'll just zoom in a bit closer. So first of all, you have what we call the, the side or the corner setup. So each wheel will be supported by a torsion bar, as we spoke about, going through the rocker and a damper. So these will control single wheel movements. And that's perhaps not so important in Formula One because of the dominance of the aero effect and you're wanting to control pitch and heave much more. Then you come into that pitch control. So what you will have is, a, I've done it here as a spring and a damper together and this controls the pitch of the car. Uh, this is the front setup, so under braking. So you will see that as the rockers move, it compresses the spring and the damper at the same time. But what you'll notice is as the car rolls, both the rockers are moving in the same direction. So that damper and spring just swing from side to side and it doesn't get compressed or extended in roll. So it's not actually affecting any of the spring uh, rate for roll at all. And then we come to the roll setup. Now I've got a roll bar here and it's effectively what you have here. And all you have is a torsion bar in the middle and then two levers and that gets twisted to control your roll rate. Now there's lots of different systems for anti-roll bars in Formula One. This is a fairly traditional one. Have a look and you will see that there's all sorts of variations on the cars, particularly around the front of the car. So you'll see that the rockers have drop links which operate the anti-roll bar so that when one side suspension is going up, the other's going down, the roll bar's twisted to resist the roll. And because it's a spring, you also want to be able to control the damping of that. So what you have here, diagonally across the rockers, is a roll damper. So you can see the pivots are here. One is above and one is below. So when the car's in roll, that compresses the damper. But just as we have with the heave damper, when the car is in pitch, that damper just swings in between the rockers and isn't compressed or extended. So again, you're seeing that complete decoupling of pitch and roll with the suspension setup. This is all very clever, but luckily we've had the chance to have a look at the rear setup of one of the cars as well. Now, Mick Schumacher had a big accident at Monaco. Fortunately, he emerged unscathed, but the gearbox separated from the car and gave us a chance to have a look in detail at the rear setup on the Haas, which therefore is the rear setup on the Ferrari. And it's quite interesting to see the variations on this basic generic theme that we've got here employed at the back of the car. So let's have a closer look at that. So now we're at the back of the car. So this is the gearbox case. And you can see Ferrari, like most teams, have a pull rod set up. And the rockers are now vertically rather than horizontally mounted. So the first thing you might notice here is that we don't have those yellow side dampers and springs. Now, it's not unusual for a Formula One car not to have side dampers or side springs, particularly because you've got so much heave and roll control and damping that you don't actually need the extra control of extra dampers. So you save some weight and some space by just deleting them completely. Now, there are torsion bars inside these rockers, but unlike what we saw at the front where one end is attached to the rocker, the other one is attached to the chassis, these ones aren't attached to the chassis at all. So what you have is instead the top of the torsion bars have got a little rocker of their own and they're linked together by this bar. So they're effectively reacting against each other. So they're not independent springs. They're much more like 
a primary heave spring set up. And these will be relatively soft to give you that soft initial movement and suspension to encourage that mechanical grip to encourage those tires to work when you've got low forces passing through the car. And then we come to the heave setup. So that's here in red. You can see Ferrari have split the heave damper from the heave spring. The heave damper is down here. This little circle here is just to show you where the shaft goes from the engine into the gearbox, a part that actually fell out during Schumacher's crash. And, and then we then have the heave spring at the top. Now what you'll notice is it's a double acting spring. So as you said, at the rear, it will squat under acceleration and that will work one of these springs. And then under braking, it will want to rise. And then you would have another one of the springs would come into action there. This is really good in terms of just making sure that the car isn't bouncing up and down in a way you don't want to. But equally, it helps support porpoising, which obviously is a sudden up and down movement. And you've got springing on both sides to control that. So that then gives Ferrari the soft initial pitch control and then the harder pitch control. And then we come to the anti-roll bar, and this is really quite interesting. The anti-roll bar is quite a normal one sat at the back here, operated by these levers and drop links. But what I saw on the pictures of the Schumacher car is that there was an inline spring on these drop links. So what this means is when you get low roll loads passing through the car at lower speeds and lower speed corners, those springs give you a very light amount of roll control. And then as the car goes through faster speed corners builds up more cornering load those springs get used up and then you then come onto the much stiffer anti-roll bar at the back here so you can see that ferrari have got dual heave rate and they've got dual anti-roll rate as well so you can see that with purely mechanical systems they're trying to recover some of those clever systems we saw all the way back at the beginning of this piece in terms of the, you know, the gas springs and the hydraulics working to do clever things in a passive way now they have to do them purely mechanically now the thing is, suspension is not homologated. Teams can continue to update this all the way through to the end of the current regulations in 2025. So they can make changes to this in order to make the most of the tyres, in order to control porpoising, and to get more out of that aero platform within the budgets that they have available. So we will continue to see updates here, and we will keep an eye and see exactly what the teams are doing in this area to make the cars handle better and better than ever.